And the expectant crowd here at the Elephant and Castle Leisure Centre are eagerly anticipating the encounter now between Sylvester Mitty and Kirkton Lang for the vacant British Waterway Championship, a title they've both held in the past, so the motivation is quite clear. At ringside, our commentators are Jim Watt and Reg Guthrie. So there it is then, the entry. This is the vacant British Championship. This is Tony Lang, uh, Kirkland Lang. That's his brother, Tony, was also a champion. I mean, so this is Kirkman Lang, a bit of an old stager and uh, one of the smartest boxers around. He's 32 and uh, held the championship back in 79 and then was defeated twice by Colin Jones in 80 and 81, although uh, he was generally considered ahead at the time. Sylvester Mitty. And he's been uh, shadow boxing in the dressing room. Kirkman Lang, I understand, has been using the punch pad that's uh, held up there by his corner man. And they've really worked themselves up for this one because I promise you there is a, a dead needle, as they say in the fight game, and always has been between Lang and Mitty. Former stable mates, uh, Sylvester Mitty, and also won the championship, but uh, lost in a three title match to Lloyd Huntington. A gentleman, please. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the main event on this afternoon's program. Frank Warren and Gary Davidson present a welterweight contest of 12 three-minute rounds at 10 stone, 7 pounds, sponsored by Rhodes Project Planning and Associates for the welterweight championship of Great Britain. Presenting in this corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Nottingham, Kirkland Lang. And from Hackney, ladies and gentlemen, Sylvester Mitty. <laughs> At the weigh-in today, Lang scale 10 stone 6 pounds, Mitty 10 stone 6 and a half pounds. Referee for this contest, Mr. Adrian Morgan, timekeeper, Mr. Tom Rice. Adrian Morgan of uh, Wales who actually once disqualified Colin Jones uh, in Cardiff, which surprised everybody at the time against the American. So the vacant uh, championship then between two of the most experienced and, I must say, best boxers in the country. So Lang then with the dreadlocks and the blue trunks. I uh, want to do a little bit of showing off because he's capable of doing that. And I've got to say right away, this was the man who has a win in Detroit over the legendary Roberto Duran. What a tremendous performance that was by me. But he's a very inconsistent character. That's been his problem. Well, I've got the right man along as his verbal sparring partner today, Jim Watt, because he sparred endless rounds with both boxers when they were originally with the Terry Lawless camp. I'm not asking you to predict, Jim, just to tell us how you think it may go. Well, Lang, is, in my opinion, has always been one of the most talented boxers in the country, but he hasn't got the best temperament. He worries about distance fights. He, he's not overly confident, although he, looking at him, you think he was. And it just depends what kind of mood he's in this afternoon. We can see already the mood Mitty's in. Mitty doesn't want to take any prisoners, he's claiming the centre of the ring and uh, trying to get home with hard punches straight away, so I think a lot depends on uh, Lang's attitude this afternoon. And even with sparring gloves, Jim, what about punching power? Yep, but, uh, so, but they're both solid punchers, uh, probably Mitty is the stronger with one hit, but uh, Lang has a fair punch. And as you say, Mitty's got off to a, a fair start chasing his man. Uh, sometimes he's can stand off for a while, but uh, I think he's fired himself up very much for this one. Well, it's probably, the, let's face it, the end of the road in title terms for a loser here. Oh, there we go. Uh, a little early here, or late for wrestling, and Lang's quite amused by that. We don't want three fours in a submission. I don't know if you can see this uh, Welsh referee working in the London rings, right in the heart of the uh, higher mash country. I think uh, Mitty's trying to do a psychological job on him now. Uh, a little bit untidy there, but uh, not a bad move when you think about uh, 12 rounds. In other words, look how strong I am. Oh, yes. 
this little clip around the face there from Mitty, and this, this may stop Lang's gallop. I saw Lang boxing with Joe Louis Manley, the American who came here and then was sensationally beaten by Terry Marsh. He worked quite a lot with him. Former amateur champions, former professional champions. They really know a move or two here. I was going to say more strokes than uh, Steve Davis. They did well to pull back from that, but he's, uh, these days fighters are hitting the other one on the floor a little bit, but he uh, restrained himself there. Well done, Mitty. Well, there's a run down there with Mitty. As I say, uh, he lost to Lloyd Huntington at the vital time when uh, he held championships, and so did Huntington. They put the three together at Alexandra Palace, and Sylvester came uh, off second best. But he has made a good comeback since then. He's won his last three inside the distance. American Willie McGee up in Leeds, which Jim Watt and I saw, of course, and Mark Mills at uh, Alexandra Palace. And a called Montano in, his, in the third round in his last fight. Corner men there, then there's Jimmy Tibbs on the outside, only Fossey in the red, and Brian Waters working with him. They work with him at the St Pancras Gymnasium where they train. Denny Mancini looking after Kirkland Lang because his manager, Mickey Duff, has stayed on in America. He said he just couldn't make this trip. I spoke to him earlier in this week, and there's his run down Lang. And he's been around a, a long time now at the age of 32. Round two this uh, vacant British welterweight championship and they're only a half a pound in it then Mitty at 10 six and a half just carries a half a pound heavier 27 is the championship weight well on the on aggression Mitty must have won the first round Jim simply because Lang didn't land anything really yeah well without a doubt Lang didn't actually do anything in the first round uh, when he was younger, he had tremendous reflexes and he could get away with this for a few rounds without taking a punch. But I don't think uh, Lang's reflexes are quite what they were. Uh, Mitty was catching him with a few of the punches, so I think it's time to get down to work uh, if he doesn't want suckered out of this. Yeah, as you say, he was, he was just a kid with a precocious talent when he was a featherweight, nine stone. He won the ABA championships against your fellow Scott Vernon Solis. But as you say, it really is amounted to matter of temperament isn't that hasn't had sufficient fights in recent years you think but I think you'll see a different line once he gets to work as long as he doesn't hang around too long and get blitzed out of there because he can put punches together he is a very fast puncher himself and if Mitty makes mistakes he'll certainly be caught out well Mitty's a good thinker as well I used to call him the Don See, that wasn't in any mafia terms, it was a tribute to his boxing knowledge. Mitty tends to commit himself a bit more than Lang will. He's more liable to make some mistakes here. The thing is, he's got to do that though, Jim. He's got to carry the fight to Lang a bit, hasn't he? Yeah, well, uh, if he doesn't make a fight of it, Lang never will. Uh, Lang likes to, to move back counter punch. I'm thinking one of the differences between them may be that Mitty has spent the last uh, three years or so boxing in title fights, but it's a long time since Lang has actually boxed with a, a major title at stake. So maybe at this stage in their, both their careers, Mitty maybe has a, a better appetite than Lang. Yes, it was 1981 when Lang last fought Colin Jones. Had fights in Australia and America since then, and. Uh, he won one at Atlantic City, too, not so long ago. A bit of a shove off there by Langer. Threw a punch and uh, used the uh, forearm there. The countdown then for the second. Now, he's stopped the running about now, Jim, as you say. Looks like he's getting down to business, Lang. Yeah, but he's still uh, carrying his hands in a silly place. He's dropping them right down to the side. He can whip punches up from there like some of the Americans do, but it's never a, a good idea against a, a noted puncher like Mitty. So now they're probably saying, listen, uh, settle down now. It could go a long way. This You knew this when you came into the 
into the fight. He won the Commonwealth Championship in 84 against the Nigerian fighting Romanus here, Mitty. Retired, actually, in uh, 1983, then made a comeback. Uh, and uh, now, apparently, he's uh, invested some of his money in a bit of property. So it's nice to see them making the best of it. Social worker in London, and, uh, as we all know, a good talker as well. If he can listen to all those orders, there seems to be quite a few of them coming in from the team in the corner there. He'll be okay, Mitty. Born in St. Lucia, pulled up in Bethnal Green in London. Into the third. And, uh, I, think, I think the referee Morgan was waving to the cameramen, the Fleet Street performers there, to keep their cameras out of the way. when he made the point there, Jim, didn't he? Uh, so I think they, he might nag him a bit if he holds on. The referee there. Oh, there was a punch on the deck. Now that's going to be a difficult one. I just congratulated him early on for not doing that. And now he's done it. He slipped in the corner. I think that was rather wet on the canvas. And the referee just severe warning and giving Lang as long as respite as he can. Now, that could have been a bit awkward, Jim, if he'd have stayed down. Yeah, well, thankfully, Lang didn't try to make the best of that. It, it wasn't hurt, but uh, some fighters maybe have rolled around there and made the best of it, but uh, full credit to Lang, he didn't. But uh, it was a little bit outrageous from Mitty there. Just over the minute gone, then, in the third. Oh, well, we're getting plenty of incident. I said that there was no love loss when they came in, and, the, and I meant it, and I think you can see that. I always remember Terry Wallace was always uh, frustrated by Lang because he had all the talent and ability. We used to watch him spar 10 rounds with Morris Hope in the gym but when he was world champion and sometimes you would wonder who was the world champion. But when he got into the ring, he didn't put his talents to work. You know, he worried about distance, he worried about a lot of different things and uh, he, he doesn't seem to have his act together this afternoon yet. <laughs> To go with it, of course, the managers are hot rival promoters in this one. Uh, Mickey Duff with Lang and Frank Warren with Mitty. said earlier you have inspired with both of them you never don't always see the devil in Mitty in the fight but it's showing here isn't it yeah definitely I think Mitty's attitudes have changed uh, when he's come into this stage in his career he, he realizes his time's not on his side and he really is determined he has a good attitude now Mitty Oh, he did well to get away from that thanks because Mitty was just standing off waiting for him to make one more mistake and he'd have nailed him with that as slippery as anything there, uh, Houdini job, that one. So that's just a gargle, they don't actually drink that, the boxers, as you can see, uh, between rounds. As they are in Lang's corner there with uh, Mancini and Joe Ryan working with him. Uh, Danny Mancini has been around the business all his life and uh, he knows what's going on. So in replay then, Jim. Yeah, well, again, Mitty the one they trying to come forward and throw the meaningful punches. Lang quite content. See, there, there, there was Jensen on the floor. He was on the floor for a good couple of seconds before Mitty came over. Uh, stern warning, definitely. Well, I don't know whether Mike Tyson started this thing about hitting after bells and people being hit on the floor. It's uh, all kinds of flouting of rules have been going on in the last six months or so in boxing. We used to only get them occasionally. Round four. And as we suspected, Jim, it was going to be very much a, a hard catcher's catch can championship, this one. Oops. 
fit. He still retains a fairly high rating, really, uh, in the world at WBC. And Lang is now down the, in the over 20s. So. But that's only because of inactivity in many ways in Lang's part, certainly not the mobility. See, Lang is used to, because of his speed and his boxing ability, Lang is used to winning the first stage of a fight and then sometimes loses his concentration and struggles a bit later on. But he hasn't won the first few rounds here. I don't know how that's going to affect him. I don't know how he's feeling at the moment. We normally expect his best work to come early. Well, that was a good right hand over the top there, and he flinched there, Mitty. As though I think he caught his head as well, Jim Mark, who's hit him with the right hand. In the fourth round, with a minute gone in the fourth, Do you think that was what happened there after he caught with the punch that they ran onto the heads or not? I'm not sure, is it certainly looked like a good punch. I think the punch itself was enough to make Mitty blink. Okay, we'll maybe get a look at it at the end of the round, hopefully, but it just looked like the punch to me. Well, I think the surprise on Mitty's face stayed uh, far longer on there than the pain from that punch. Same. Lang is really a smart boxer, and you can see now how he, he caught Roberto Duran unawares and outpointed him. I mean, it really was a tremendous performance. Even if you could say that Duran may not have been at his best, it was still good enough for me. Minute to go. Oh, good one, two punches. The left hand, right hand following in. But he's just walking towards that right hand a little bit, a little bit dangerously. He's See, another thing, Reg, uh, Lang has always been a welterweight. Yeah, I got the impression when Mitty was boxing Hunnigan, it was like a welter. I know Hunnigan's exceptionally good, but it was like a welterweight in with a light welterweight. And a couple of signs showed up again there. When, when Lang unloaded, you could see you know, how badly shaken Mitty was by the punches. Although Mitty is slightly heavier, his best work, we have to remember, was at uh, 10 stone. Yes, he had a... 15 round fight so he knows what the distance is that's no longer applicable in british or european boxing that distance so if we get the countdown then it might have livened mitty up to realize he can never afford to take it easy so replay of that incident now jim see which you weigh this one up showing the right hand yeah but just look like the punch yeah uh, maybe a push with the forehead there but i think the punch was the, the thing that was making mitty blink a good shot it was yep and all of a sudden that the fight turned all the way around and for the first time we see lang with a bit of confidence there uh, looking to unload there it is at a different angle now follow-up stuff coming in he, he, he had an impressive round there uh, lang but he came back but uh, Certainly, who knows, that uh, one punch might have made some difference now to the reading of the fight. So they are putting the makeup on him there, saying a bit of Vaseline around the chin. Round five. some heavy stuff I think the sparring's over Jim don't you yeah well Lang's been looking to pot shot but Mitty's doing the same things as he was doing in the first round trying to force things but uh, Lang has changed a bit he's setting himself more on his feet and uh, he's looking for that right hand over the top of Mitty's leads and he's putting power into his punches now which he wasn't doing in the first couple of rounds Oh, that right hand came in there. He's timing that well, Lang. 
started warning on the back of the neck with that one. I'm not sure I agree with the referee there, Jim. Well, I think Mickey ducked underneath the punch, landed there behind his neck. But yeah, exactly. I don't, think, I don't think it was intentional. But, oh, that was a perfect shot. I don't know. It's all right hand happy, but it's paying off now. As Lang has got Middy trapped in uh, Lang's corner almost, and now he's been able to move away. He was going to take up the count there. No, he stopped it. He stopped it. And that did surprise me there in a championship fight. I never criticise referees for stopping contests quickly. But what do you think, Jim? Well, I, I was expecting Mitty to grab hold of Lang, which he didn't do. Uh, the first punch that landed the right hand was a corker of a punch. I was surprised that Mitty stayed on his feet. But from that point on, Mitty was taking punches. He wasn't throwing anything worthwhile back at all. And uh, he wasn't going on the floor. He didn't seem to be w his wits about him. Either he should have grabbed hold of line or he should have taken a count. But he didn't do either of these things. So we'll see it here. Video, that was a perfect punch and from that point on Lang was in serious trouble he wasn't coping with the problem there goes another one see he's not throwing back Reg he's not claiming a hold of, of Lang he's not doing anything they should be doing at all he's on the ropes here yep. I, I agree with you looking about when you watch it again and we do get a second chance the referee was right I thought he might have been just a second or two uh, too quick there but he, he wasn't Uh, there's a presentation being made by a former boxer there, Phil Lundgren from London, who's now a steward of the Boxing Board of Control. So it's a championship again now for Kirkland Lang of Nottingham. And uh, all points east, he just fights everywhere, this fellow, America, Australia. He's, uh, he's been all over, and I must say, he must have whipped himself into tremendous shape because he knew that uh, this could be the last time around and uh, disliked. Mitty, of course, and uh, was determined to win. That's the famous Lonsdale belt. And here's Jim Rosenthal then with the new champion. Here you go. Kirkland, many congratulations. Uh, we might have been a bit surprised how quickly that fight finished, were you? Certainly not. I was only a matter of time, you know. It came out rash with me, but I know I was just cool. As every superstar, I was just nice and cool. And it was only a matter of time, you know. I wasn't even in second gear yet. As I say, I'm dedicated to the best now. Mind you, you started off very slowly, didn't you? Yeah, right. The plan. What was the plan? I watched him behind the gun, you know, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to get panicky. Just cool and composed. Now, was there genuine needle between the two of you, or was it just pre-fight ballyhoo? Pre-fight ballyhoo. Yeah, of course there is. Ballyhoo. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. We're friends really deep there. <laughs> <laughs> and what now? I mean, you're hardly a spring chicken, are you? What now for you? Well, I'm back again. This is it. For real, I was never for real in the beginning. I beat Roberto Duran and I wasn't even ready mentally. Imagine what I can do now I'm ready mentally. Listen, I'm sure you'll be delighted to have a look at the end of the fight. If you just have, have a look down, and here are the last moments, and you tell us all about them. Here you go. The right hand's over the top. I've been practicing all that for weeks. Look, I didn't even, I didn't, couldn't even show my true ability. The man didn't give me a chance, it was so rough, you know what I mean? Eh? Look at that, a little bit of killer instinct coming back in place. Right, and you've got, you would have no complaints or no surprise at all about it being stopped there? Oh, certainly not. He was off his feet days. Sheer boxing instinct came from my own way. Trained very hard for that. Excellent. You've had your ups and downs. It's good to see you back and smiling. Hey. And with a belt round your waist as well. Kirk and Lang is back. Uh, for years, people have been saying to me, I'm the greatest thing since you Ray Leonard. And why not rich man and healthy man? Everywhere we go, I get it. Get Rocky Kelly together. What, right now, I would like Colin Jones. <laughs> right, the message is clear. Thanks a lot, Kurt, and well done. Thank you. Well, as uh, Jim suggested, when the end came, it really was so sudden, and so Kirk Lang has that British waterweight title again, and although at 32 years of age, he may not be a spring chicken, he has all kinds of aspirations. We can actually go across now, because Jim Rosenthal is ready to talk to the loser, Sylvester Mitty. Yes, thanks very much, Dickie. It's not always that the loser comes over so quickly. Subi, what was your view on how that fight finished? Well, I was doing very well in the fight, and what happened, the last shot, Kirkman threw a right-hander, and the thumb was sticking out. And the thumb went into my eye, and it totally messed up my perspective. And after I got that thumb in the eye, it also upset my balancing, because I can't focus out of that eye. And literally, when he hit me in the eye, it was almost like... Well, the only thing I could um, describe it, it felt like the eye was pushed to the back of the head. And it just 
as I say, just mess with my balance mechanism. But after the way you started, were you a bit disappointed at the way he got to you and obviously hurt you? Yeah, but he, he, it, Kirkman was getting tired. I know that. And it was uh, basically, it was the last, I think, Kirkman, was, it was the last ditch effort. I mean, had I weathered that, had I not got a thumb, I was still strong enough to take over Kirk in the later stages. Listen, it's tough to ask you this while you're still sweating and obviously very disappointed, but people will ask now, well, what is there left for Sylvester Mitty? Yeah, um, I, I also ask the same thing as well. But I'm terribly disappointed now, and I don't think it now is the right time I could come up with an objective opinion. So I'm going to look at the fight, see how it's performing, and within the next couple of months, I'll make up my mind what I'm going to do. But at this moment, I'm terribly disappointed because I know I had a beat in a Kirk had I not... And it, it was a good punch. But the most damaging thing was the thumb got me in the eye. Listen, I appreciate you coming over. Thank you. Unfortunately, let's go back to Dickie. So Sylvester Mitty needing time to think, but of course yeah, the winner, Kirk Lang, delighted, and uh, he has that British World of Weight title again. And cheers going up now as he leaves the ring, as you gather behind him. Let us continue now with the main supporting fight.